Hey YouTube, welcome to the next episode on trigonometry. Today, very important lesson we're going to look at solving. I'm going to show you the key rules to solving any trig equation. And it's really simple. You just need to follow them and it will answer everything. So let's get right to it. Now, in year 12 in AS Maths, we need to know some trig identities that are very important for solving. We know what the definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent are. They all originate from the unit circle. But can we do more with this? There are two properties that we need to know and remember. In year 13, there are more. But we have this unit circle, meaning the radius is one, and I formed a triangle out of that. We can work out in this triangle what the opposite length and the adjacent length are. So if I call this the opposite and the adjacent, then I can say, if I want to find the opposite length, I have the hypotenuse here. I can say sine of theta. We know sine measures the opposite over the hypotenuse, but the hypotenuse here is 1. So that just tells us that the opposite length is sine theta. So this length here is sine theta. And by a similar argument, we can find that the adjacent length is cos theta. Now, what things can we do with a right angle triangle? The first thing we can say is Pythagoras' theorem. So when we apply Pythagoras, we get the two shorter length squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So we get sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is 1. And this is the first identity we need to remember. The second one is we did sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. We did cos theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. We can also apply tan and see what that gives us. If I do tan theta, I have the opposite divided by the adjacent. We know tan is opposite divided by the adjacent. And this is the next identity we need to remember. They're very simple and we use them a lot. So how do we use some of these uh, for solving? The Pythagorean identity I'm going to do in another episode, so make sure you remember that. But tan x is sin x over cos x we are going to use today. So for example, find all the values of x in the interval between 0 and 360 such that sin x is 1 half. Now, after your experiences with the sine and cosine rule, we know we should do inverse sine. So we're going to say x is inverse sine of one half. And in degrees, that gives us 30 degrees. Now I give these a name. They're known as the primary values, the first values that the calculator gives you. I'm going to call it the PV. Now there's a certain set of rules that I'm going to describe to you that you need to remember. Here's the sine graph. And we have worked out that when we have a half, if you read it off the sine graph, it gives us 30 degrees. But if you notice, you could carry on and find another value. How do we get that? The sine graph has symmetry at 90 degrees. So we can use that. The sine graph here starts at 0. And this primary value of 30 is 30 degrees in from 0. Then using the symmetry, on the other side we have 180 degrees. We need to go in by 30 degrees there to get what we call the secondary value. So, in general, for the sine graph, to find the secondary value, we do 180, take away whatever the primary value is. In our case, it was 30 degrees, which gives us 150 degrees. And we see between 0 and 360 from our graph, there's only two values, 30 and 150. I'm going to discuss a little bit later how we find other values if the range was a little bit bigger. So in a nutshell for sine, we do 180 minus the primary value, which means you don't need to draw the graph anymore. I'm showing you the graph once so that you see where it comes from. How about tan? Tan x is 1. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do inverse tan of both sides. So x is inverse tan of 1, which in the calculator is 45 degrees, and that's our primary value. Now how does it work with the tan graph? I showed you in the last episode what the tan graph looks like between 0 and 360. Now, I have located 1. Now, with 1, you can see and read across, we have worked out that this is 45 degrees. But you also, also notice that you can keep going and find this value. Now, the tan graph is not necessarily that it, it has symmetry, but it repeats itself. So, from 0, you're going in 45 degrees. Then 
By that repetition, the tan graph actually repeats every 180 degrees. Here, from 180, you can go in by 45 degrees as well to find that secondary value. So for tan, it never changes, guys. You always do 180 plus whatever the primary value is to get our secondary value. And in this case, it'll be 225 degrees. And then also you notice that between 0 and 360, there is only two values. So our only two values here are 45 and 225 degrees, and that's it. So I need you to remember 180 plus the primary value for tan. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you're learning something, then hit that like button and comment down below to let me know what you want to learn next. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. How about cosine? As usual, we're going to do inverse cos. So inverse cos of one over root two gives us 45 degrees. You can confirm this in your calculator. Now, what does the cosine graph look like? Now between zero and 360, this is what it looks like. And we have located 45 degrees. So we have one over root two is somewhere here. And we have located 45. But you notice again, we have another one over here. How do we find that secondary value? Well, the cosine graph is symmetrical about 180 degrees. So we're coming in 45 here, which means using symmetry about 180, we have to go back 45 degrees from 360 to find our secondary value. And it's always the case. So to find our secondary, we're going to do 360 minus the primary value. So 360 minus 45 degrees gives us 315 degrees. Now here, really important, you notice that the range is between zero and 720. So what do we do when the range is bigger? It means we have another cosine graph next to it. So we could actually carry on this and find more values between zero and 720. It's actually very simple. Every single graph cycles every 360 degrees. Once you've found the primary and secondary value, all you do is you add 360 to the primary value to get the other value and to the secondary value. We are also going to add 360. So you just have to pay attention to the range. To find the primary and secondary value is the same every single time. Then once you've found those, you check the range and you say, okay, well, we can find more values here by adding 360 to both the primary and the secondary value for 45 plus 360 is 405 and 315 plus 360 is 675. So there's actually four solutions here, 45, 315, 405, 675. So in a nutshell, we find the primary and secondary value for all of sine, cos, and tan, it doesn't change. Then we add, and you could actually minus 360 as well to find other values in the range. It just depends on what the range is. So here we're finding between minus 180 and 180, such that minus two sine x is five cos x. Now I'm not gonna draw any more graphs. We need to figure out what we're doing here in terms of inverse sine, cos, or tan. When we solve, we need to make sure it's in, one, in terms of one function only. And here is where we notice tan x is sin x over cos x. So we need to rewrite this by dividing both sides by cos x. So this cancels and we're left with minus 2 sin x over cos x is tan x equals 5. Then we divide by minus 2, we get tan x is minus 5 over 2. So x then is inverse tan of minus 5 over 2. And here, I'm just going to round it. So minus 68.2 degrees or so, that's what I'm gonna write down. But keep this number in your calculator, minus 68.2 degrees. And remember, this is your primary value. How do we work out the secondary value for tan? We do 180 plus the primary value. So going back to the calculator, 180 plus the answer. So you've got 111.8, and that's our secondary value. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to decide, can you add or minus 360? Because both of these are actually in the range. 
Now, if you take minus 68.2 and you add 360, that's going to come way out of the range. That's way bigger than 180. You definitely don't want a minus 360 from that. With 111.8, you definitely don't want to add 360, but you can always check. I mean, it's not going to be in the range, but you have this number. If you minus 360, you can see that's out of the range. The lower limit there is minus 180, so it's not going to do anything for us. So in this case, our only two solutions are to one decimal place, minus 68.2 and 111.8. Okay, last question. Find all the values of x between 0 and 360, such that 1 plus tan theta times 5 sine theta minus 2 is 0. So I've been kind enough to factorize this. And just like algebra, it means 1 plus tan theta is 0, or 5 sine theta minus 2, sorry, minus 2 is 0. So we rearrange for tan here, and then we rearrange for sine we'd get two-fifths. So here, theta is inverse tan of minus 1, which is minus 45 degrees, which is the primary value. Now let's just focus on this for now. You notice, actually, that the minus 45 is not in the range. Let's just put a cross there. But that doesn't matter. You still use it to find other values in the range. Remember, secondary value. We do 180 plus the primary value. So you're doing 180 plus negative 45, which is just 180 minus 45, which is 135 degrees. And that is in the range. But remember the next step, we have to add and minus 360. You look at the primary value and say, can I add or minus 360 to that? The answer is yes. If you take minus 45 and you add 360, and you have to do it in this order, you don't write 360 first. You take the primary value. We're going to add 360. That gives us 315 degrees. That is in the range. If you do the same with 135, it's already in the range, so you're not going to add or minus 360. So the only two solutions here are these two. All right, what about sine? Theta is inverse sine of two-fifths. And I'm going to round that. I'm just going to say 23.6. 23.6, that's our primary value. Now, how do we work out the secondary value for sine? We always do 180 minus the primary value, and I'll just say equals because we have rounded that number. So we can just do 180 minus the answer. So 156.4, and that's our secondary. And we can't do anything more than that, yeah? So our only two solutions here are these two. Yeah, you can't add or minus 360. Now, I just want to make something clear. So students always ask me, um, because sometimes they do something slightly different in school. With tan, they always say, can you just add or minus 180 degrees? The answer is yes, but that's unique to tan only. Yeah, because you have to work out the secondary value, you do 180 plus. Now, the reason I don't teach it like that is because I want to make sure that everybody does the same thing for every single function. So it doesn't matter whether you're dealing with sine, cos, or tan, you're always doing the PVSV and adding and minusing 360. It becomes a little bit, you know, you have to remember a lot for A-level maths already. And remembering exceptions, I think it's just a bit overload, especially when you get into year 13. I like to teach the same thing every single time. Yeah, so PVSV, add and minus 360 is very simple. And here's the summary. So when we solve trig, we follow these rules in order. We first apply the inverse function to either sine, cos, or tan. We call this the primary value. Then we find the secondary value by applying the following rules. So for sine, 180 minus. For cos, 360 minus. And for tan, 180 plus, And it never changes. Then we add or subtract 360 to find other values in the range. Remember, sometimes the primary value isn't even in the range, but that doesn't matter. So that's it, guys. This is an introduction to solving trig. Next lesson, I'm going to look at trig where we have to modify the range slightly because the angle is not just x. So make sure you're familiar with the rules and we're going to use it a bit more in the next lesson. I look forward to it. So if you learned something, please hit that like button and subscribe if you want more maths content. I look forward to seeing you in my next trig lesson. Peace.